The drama continues to take a center stage in the city of Johannesburg since the removal of Vasco da Gama as the council speaker via a motion of no confidence last month. His departure elicited disagreements within the council in terms of who must act in the position pending the appointment of a permanent speaker. The question is, how will this end? Good evening. My name is Zola Shalwana. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Joining me in the studio to unpack what's happening in the city of Johannesburg is the Chair of Chairs, Councillor Colin Makubele. Welcome, Councillor. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Sola, and good evening to the viewers as well. Now, um, a question that uh, we want to know is that um, the position of an acting speaker, how did it come about? Um, I think the starting point was the uh, standing rules and orders of council where in my position as the chair of chairs of the city of Joburg, I have acted in that position many times, including when um, Councillor Vasco da Gama, who was then a speaker, had a family bereavement and for two weeks he was not available, then I had to automatically take up that uh, position um, in the city of Johannesburg. So that is the, the chair of chairs has always been a deputy speaker, you know, um, to, to um, the speaker. So this time, I think the laws were silent on when the position is totally vacant, when there is no incumbent there. And we found ourselves at loggerheads legally. Uh, the legislature had a different view, and also, of course, the executive through the DA had a different view, and hence the matter had to go to court, where the court now provided clarity to say when the speaker is totally not available in terms of there's nobody occupying that position, I cannot automatically step in like I did when uh, there was a speaker but he had uh, family issues or leave or whatever. But for now then the acting city manager now must take over and he be the one to then call the council meeting that will elect the new uh, speaker in council. So wouldn't you say that is a conflict of interest between the two position of being the chair of chairs and the acting speaker? No it's not because the chair of chairs is almost like a deputy speaker. So it's like a president and a deputy president. When the president is not there, he will automatically assume that office. But the rules of council are different on when the president is totally maybe deceased or resigned, etc. That's where the gray area was. And the Structures Act had a different view, and the rules of council had a different view. So we needed to understand which one we rely on legislatively. So the court did a good job yesterday. Of course, both senior councils argued you know, on the merits of both cases. But finally, we had the decision to say, in the case where they, uh, there is no speaker at all, there should be no acting speaker. The city manager should be the one to then call council. So there is no conflict because I support the speaker anyway. I report to the speaker anyway. I assume his functions anyway when it's not available and I've done that on a number of occasions. There's, there's been a squabble around um, this position. Now, do you think that this could be more of a political battle between the parties that are involved? Look, of course, um, there is politics at play and um, but now that the court has pronounced and I think well the debate for me is over because it's not about being an acting speaker for two three days the idea is that we want to get to council the reason I was acting is because the advice I was given is that if I do not call council you know according to the legislature that says if the, the position of the speaker is vacant within 14 days we must call council and uh, council must sit and elect the speaker. And if I didn't do that and it was found that indeed it is my responsibility, I would have been found to be derelict in my duties. Anyone could bring a charge against me. So now the question is, if the city manager also believed even then that he is the one to do that, why hasn't he called the council meeting? This is when you realize that when our democratic, uh, when our constitutional democracy says na principle number four or five, I can't remember, that public servants must be non-partisan. This is what they're talking about. They need to be independent, professional, and non-partisan so that they're not influenced by the political parties and what is playing out politically. Because if indeed the acting city manager was independent and non-partisan, he should have by now by law called a, 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 a council meeting and would not be having this debate. 
but because there's a strong influence of the DA within the city through the mayor, through the executives, and um, of course there's a, a lot of hula baloo in firing the councillors that voted uh, Vasco da Gama out, including myself, where our parties are instructed to deal with us, remove us, etc., to ensure and secure that when we go to council and also have to deal with a motion of no confidence for the mayor, they have the numbers. So it's a numbers game politically that's at play. There's no reason why day 13 we haven't seen a notice to call council. All right, this is a <coughs> conversation that's still going on. Yesterday, the Johannesburg High Court ruled against Councillor Makubele's notice for sitting off council as null and void. After the ad break, we will unpack that and more. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're still tuned in to So It Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. Today we're talking about what's happening in the city of Johannesburg following the departure of the council speaker. Now on Tuesday, the High Court in Johannesburg granted the city of Johannesburg an interdict preventing today's special sitting of the council, which was called by the Chair of Chairs Councillor Colin Makubele. The judge ruled that the meeting is invalid and void as Makubele does not have the capacity to call a council meeting. The mayor's office has since welcomed the judgment. Let's have a listen to this clip. The Johannesburg multi-party government welcomes the judgment handed down by the Honorable Judge Tlina Malindi in the High Court, which is in line with the position that we have held. Judge Malindi ruled that the notice issued by the Chair of Chairs, Councillor Colleen Makubele, for an extraordinary sitting of council to sit on Tuesday 13 September 2022 is invalid, null and void. Furthermore, that the meeting called for Tuesday has been interdicted from taking place. The ruling went on further to state that contrary to what Councillor Makubela and her allies believe, she is not the acting speaker and is interdicted from holding herself out as or as purporting to be exercising any of the statutory functions of the acting speaker. The city and the multi-party government have long contended that the office of the speaker remains vacant until such a time the city manager convenes a sitting of council to elect an acting speaker or speaker from among the members of the house. The actions of Council Makubele and those who bankrolled her illegal actions must be condemned in the harshest of terms. These actions have only sought to create confusion in the minds of residents and undermine the laws of the country and the rules of council all in an effort to grab power at all costs. Now, after listening to that, um, how do you think that has affected you as the councillor? No effect at all. Mm -hmm. No effect at all. Um, I've heard what you said. In fact, we welcome the judgment as well because it provided clarity, as I said. Mm -hmm. So anything else is really people's opinion. I think the key issue is that uh, the, the court has assisted us to understand mm -hmm. that it's the acting city manager that must call the meeting, and uh, the meeting must be called. That was the key issue. The meat of the meeting must still be dealt with. Whether it's called by myself or the acting city manager, the agenda doesn't change. We must elect a, a speaker. We must deal with a motion of no confidence on the mayor if it's brought to the table at that meeting. Everything else is really um, not worth commenting on. Now, I want us to listen to this clip again from the mayor's office in terms of the way forward. Now that the court has pronounced on what was clear to many of us, we appeal to our political opponents to seize and desist from destructive and self-serving political games. Now that this chapter is closed, we'll await notice from the acting city manager, Mr. Brian Maduka, for a sitting of council to duly elect a speaker. Equally in interim, this will give the acting secretary to council the space and time to run the day-to-day -day administrative and operational functions of the city legislature. While it is never desirable to ventilate these matters in court, we had no choice but to approach the courts to rule on this matter, as common sense and a commitment to democratic processes did not prevail. The Johannesburg multi-party government will continue with the repair and rebuild of the city and we call upon all councillors, regardless of political affiliation, to join us as we build a city of golden opportunities for the six million residents of Johannesburg. People must always come before politics. 
after hearing that clip, do you then see yourself occupying um, the acting speaker position? Um, according to, I mean, there have been, been tweets on social media um, about what has been happening. Has that shaken you in any way? No. Remember, I didn't break the law. Hmm. I didn't appoint myself to be uh, acting speaker. The rules of counsel says I am. The Structures Act says I'm not. And the, now the judge has given direction. So there's really no debate. Of course, it was sensationalized. I'm purporting to be this and this. And um, I wasn't going to risk as per advice, which was also provided to, to the um, uh, DA and to the executives by way of a legal opinion to say, if I don't act in my position, I'll be unlawful, et cetera, as per their opinion. Now there's clarity. Now we can move on. I really don't think there is anything to hone in and create an issue about. For me, it's done. All we are waiting for now is the meeting to be called, because that's where the debate on many issues is going to happen. So after the appointment, would you then say, let's say they decide to uh, appoint you as chair of chairs, would you then um, fill the role? Um, obviously, now it's going to be a thing of uh, certain parties need to sit together and then decide who's going to be elected. If they elect you, would you then take the seat? Yes, if you are nominated, what happens is that um, anybody basically in council is eligible to be a speaker mm -hmm. and anyone can nominate any councillor whom they deem fit to take up that role. If I'm nominated, of course it will be an honour and I will accept it and it will depend on the votes. There's 270 councillors that must vote and if of course I get the highest vote I'll occupy it or whoever does will occupy the position. So it's, it's a numbers game really and it depends on whether you get nominated and people see you as somebody that can carry out that responsibility. They always say when two bulls fight, the grass suffers. Now after the break, we will take a look at how is what's happening in the city of Johannesburg affecting service delivery. Do not go anywhere. Welcome back. You're still tuned in to Soweto Today. Thank you for staying with us. Now we have reached the last leg of the show and we shift our focus to the concerns of the public. Now according to, um, to, to your view, Councillor, do you think that now this is going to affect the service delivery of people in Johannesburg, the city of Johannesburg in particular. Look, the service delivery of the city has always been affected and hence we voted Vasco da Cama out. Because um, Soweto, as an example, the mayor only came last week to address the Soweto residents. There is no electricity, roads, water, unemployment. You go to elders, it's crime, it's violence, it's guns every day. Service delivery was broken, and this so-called multi-party coalition, it is not delivering because the mayor is unable to act independently. She's, she has not really advanced any real programs that are advancing the city's service delivery. And the reason that we also voted Vasco da Gama out is because he was unable to hold her accountable, to come and account to council because they are from the same party. So for me, we are actually now going to start service delivery once we get rid of all of these elements and put capable people that really are putting the residents of the city first, not some DA person sitting in Cape Town, not some coalition that really serves to give people position and they're economically independent and they don't want to vote anything else other than to keep themselves together. They don't want to do anything for the residents other than to protect their, their, their position through white supremacy, etc. We really are looking for councillors that want to serve as mayors, as speakers, the residents of the city of Joburg. Now you will see service delivery after this. Now the last question that I'd like to throw to you, councillor, is that this has obviously been taken to, to, to court and there have been costs. Can you please take us through the process? Look, as I sit now, I have not received from my legal team because uh, we received the um, verdict around nine uh, last night. And this whole day, I'll be honest with you, it's just been interviews, uh, you know, and really fielding questions, etc. I'm only going to sit with my legal team tomorrow, analyze everything that has happened, also receive the costs that are coming from the other side. And of course, I'll make arrangements to pay. I have undertaken to comply with the court order, so that will be um, dealt with as soon as I receive everything else. It's, it's, not, it's not a big deal. It happens every day. It's not really a sensation. You know, people go to court and courts are pushing to whoever loses in court. 
So it's not something that um, is giving me sleepless nights. It's mm -hmm. part of my job. So people on social media um, are quite interested in what is going to change um, should you, they put you um, in the chair because like you said, there's so many things that are not going on, uh, going well rather as, 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 as far as service delivery is concerned and in Johannesburg you spoke about El Dorado Park. What, are, what, what should people expect should you be um, in the chair? Let me start by at home first in the council what will change. As you can see and I gave an example of an acting city manager who's supposed to do his job and he's not doing it because he is um, taking instructions from elsewhere. That is the role of a speaker or the chair of chairs to hold him accountable, to have him explain, to have his head roll, to say, why haven't you done your job? My role, if I take up a speaker, the first thing is to really, uh, whoever would be the mayor, if it's Mayor Palazzo, whoever else is the mayor, they need to be able to give us the plans to say, what are you going to be doing in, in, in Aldous, in, in Soweto, etc. And we monitor those plans. If those things are not happening, it needs to then come back to council and they must be removed. That is the role of oversight and holding mm -hmm. executives accountable. And I'm going to be very, very strict. And that's why they don't want me because mm -hmm. I, I, I'm COPE, I'm one seat party as they call us, small parties. I really am not pulled by strings anyway. You know, I'm not going to be taking instructions whether it's a DA, or it's a Lutuli House or any other person. I work according to the constitution of the land, the constitution uh, 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 of my party, and also the oath of office that I have taken to first and foremost mm -hmm. protect the residents of the city of Joburg and also any decision that I make, it must first and foremost be gauged and bounced against what does it mean to the electorate that has put me in power, not to Helen Ziller who is sitting in Cape Town. So in closing, what are your comments <coughs> particularly um, to the members of the public to assure them that even, even though this has happened, their interests are still um, a priority? This has happened for their interest. And I think you feel it, that all the residents of the city of Joburg know that nothing has been happening. What the multi-party coalition came to do is to be corruption cops, to purge black uh, professionals and executives out of position, close black businesses, you know, to focus on affluent areas and suburbs. Now, what you can expect is a, a coalition, and we've always said as minorities, because this is a minority block that has now held hands to move together and say enough is enough of being bullied, abused, white supremacy being detected to, etc. We want to now take hands and say, this is our time to tell you how you're going to serve our residents because they voted us into power. It's not going to be a DL-led coalition. It's going to be not going to be an ANC-led coalition or an EFF-led coalition. It's going to be a coalition with common values, common ground, that will live up to the emblem of the city of Joburg. It says unity in development. The first thing is that we're going to unite and focus on development of the residents of the city of Joburg, not being encumbered by any instruction, by any economic goal of any party, no. So where can we expect the next seating um, of the election of the chair of chairs? As the city manager. All right, thank you so much, Councillor, for joining us. This is, of course, one of our developing stories, so we will continue giving you an update here on Soweto TV. Well, that's how we wrap up today's episode of Soweto TV. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to engage with us about the show by simply sending us an email on Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. Alternatively, you can contact us on 11 from myself and the rest of the team, we will see you on the next news bulletin that's coming right after, after this. Goodbye for now.